listen. I'm building another Threadripper system for experiments, but then something happened, something so exciting, that I had to do a completely separate video on it. And that thing that's so exciting is the ADATA SX8200 Pro. SX8200 Pro. 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 3D NAND NVMe 1.3 SLC caching, advanced LDPC, and a DIY heatsink. So with, without heatsink, it's in the box. But the Pro, truth be told, Samsung's kind of the incumbent here. And uh, good lord, I buy a lot of Samsung SSDs for various projects. I mean, the 970 Evo, the 960 Evo, 970 Pro, 970 Evo, again, you know, they're pricey. The SX8200 Pro, though, Pro, it's a Pro. Can it challenge Samsung, the incumbent? Well, you're gonna have to stay tuned after the bump because that's how we do those things, right? It's a video, I mean, that's how we do those things. All right, long story short, this is the Dark Base 900 Pro, I think. It was on sale on Amazon. This is uh, the MSI X399 creation, like the mag creation motherboard. This is the most ridiculous VRM motherboard ever. Two big drawbacks on that motherboard. No built-in IO shield, no 10 gig ethernet. I've actually talked to them about the no 10 gig ethernet and they're like, eh, we don't think people really want 10 gig ethernet. Look, if they're spending $1,700 on a CPU, they probably want 10 gig ethernet. I actually spent $1,700 twice on a CPU, but it's for a project. Now this, this is what the project is actually for. This is a Fire Pro 7150. Now I have, a, <laughs> I have to thank a viewer for this anonymously. They didn't, they don't, they don't want to be mentioned, but an anonymous benefactor is supplying parts for crazy mad science, things like SRIOV. And for a long time, I wanted to get a pretty decent SRIOV capable card and, uh, they have supplied this loaner, and so I will be using this for SRIOV stuff on the Linux channel. But this video, this video is a review of the uh, SX8200 Pro. Now one thing to note is that even though it is one terabyte, it is under provisioned, which means that you've got about 40 gigabytes or so that's reserved for housekeeping and, and that sort of thing. So it's about 960 gigabytes usable. Now, there's a lot of NVMe out there. I mean, the NVMe, well, I should say the M.2 form factor will support PCI Express connection as well as SATA. And so it's really hard to comparison shop an M.2 and really compare apples to apples. There's a lot of budget M.2 that do use a PCI Express connection, but it only uses two of the four PCI Express lanes. So you're automatically gonna be limited to two gigabytes per second. So crash course in like shopping for an NVMe is like one, what is the connection? NVMe, strictly speaking, is a PCI Express type connection. You can get an M.2 form factor that uses a SATA connection. And most motherboards support both SATA and NVMe type connections in this you know, M.2 slot. So if you're gonna go for an M.2, you really should try to find one that has an NVMe connection. The reason being is that, you know, SATA is a little bit of a performance bottleneck with today's modern flash. And if you're gonna get SATA, you can probably get like a two and a half inch drive, you know, something that's a little bit more traditional. And this is gonna be limited to about 550 megabytes per second, give or take. But typically this form factor is cheaper just because it's physically larger, there's more room for components, it's easier to do stuff. So the uh, the whole M.2 SATA doesn't make a lot of sense unless you're building a small form factor machine or you just want to build it into the motherboard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The higher density memory is really what goes here. And with the advent of triple level cells, it means the individual chips that are soldered onto the M.2 can support, th can support three times the information. It's like, well, I mean, not sort of kinda. It's a higher information density. Of course, with higher information density comes automatic, uh, slower read and write speed. Now you can add more chips in parallel. So instead of like where you might have two or four chips running in parallel on the older technology, now maybe you might have four or eight chips running in parallel and you can pack multiple pieces of silicon into one package now. So it can be sort of confusing. You just have to look at the benchmarks, but it's even not just the raw performance because there are caching technologies. So a modern, well-built, M.2 is going to have a single level cell or dual level cell caching. It's going to say that. And so you end up with this device that's actually fairly complicated. There's a controller on there and some memory, like some RAM. 
uh, that's used for you know buffering and the control program and that sort of thing that's going to optimize the write. And then you have a flash memory chip that's really fast that you know is arranged such that it can, it can be really fast. And that will help you with writes because writes on those triple level cells are not the fastest. And then you've got the rest of your flash memory. And so the operating system that's on the NVMe will handle the incoming write load, and the read load, and sort of balance it appropriately. And that's one of the reasons that you know Samsung has been able to, with their 960 and 970 Pro, approach the performance in some aspects of Intel Optane, which is a fundamentally different memory technology than the NAND flash. And that's it's getting into be like a really sort of technical discussion. And it is a fun and interesting discussion but perhaps a discussion for another day. Now there are a lot of, of NVMe out there that are more inexpensive and will give you a direct connection to the newer higher density triple level cells, but the performance is gonna be slower. And some of that you see with like some of the product differentiation, like from Samsung, you get the 970 Evo and the 970 Pro, and the Pro is faster and more optimized. It's not just the hardware though, it's also the software. So Adata has built a truly pro, like the architecture of this drive, is a truly pro architecture. It has the memory, it has the single level cell cache, it's adhering to the NVMe 1.3 spec, it's a 3D packaging technology, so they've really crammed on the silicon. It's also got a long warranty, so they're pretty confident in their product. And I also reached out to them because I was like, hey, is it true that this really is, like the performance here is what I've been reading online? So they offered to send me this, and I was like, okay, that's cool but uh, no editorial control or anything like that. And they're like, that's totally fine. I was like, I'm actually probably gonna do a video of it versus the Samsung. Are you cool with that? And they're like, yes, we're, we've, we're confident in our product. So onto the benchmarks. Now there's lies, damned lies, and statistics. Well, the benchmarks are really interesting. We ran benchmarks with the Ferronix test suite as well as Ada64 and Crystal Dismark just to get a lay of the land. Now, Samsung does stuff in terms of optimizations, in terms of what they do in their firmware. And it looks like Adata does the same thing. In Crystal Disk Mark, we see three and a half gigabytes per second, you know, one to two gigabytes per second, right? Those are the advertised speeds. It's right in line with that. But if you look at the full suite of tests in like the Pharonix test suite, you'll see that it's a little different picture and it's not bad, it's actually quite good in terms of like the response time and like the file compile uh, benchmark where like you're compiling a program, it's almost as good as Optane. Like they've somehow squeezed that performance out of NAND. So in general, I think that, you know, Adata saying that this drive is on par with the Samsung Pro 970, I think that's accurate. And that's really surprising since this, at, at the time of this video, it costs $100 less than the 970 Pro. There's also the Evo Plus, which is, you know, made to be more competitive with these high performance NVMe drives. But if you were shopping today, I mean, just, this is a great drive. I mean, look at these benchmarks. This is a really solid result, pretty much across the board. Even using eight meg sizes for your block sizes, we're getting over two gigabytes per second read. This is a really solid result for this drive. Now testing this under Linux, and with workloads like compiling software and all, everything like that, it was basically flawless. The only thing that was weird was if you have a mixed read and write workload, it was a little bit slower in some scenarios than I would have expected. So like taking a PostgreSQL database and reading from a multi gigabyte file and then inserting into that was a little bit slower than either the read speed or the write speed. And that's not, it's, it behaves a little differently on the Samsung drives but the performance was not deleterious. Like it was not like the system was hanging or, or doing anything weird, at least like to the user experience side of things. And that's one of the reasons you buy an NVMe over SATA is like if you're running a lot of stuff in the background, like say that you, you know, want to watch a movie or play games while you're uncompressing gigabytes and gigabytes of stuff in the background, well, NVMe is going to handle that a lot better than SATA. So like with me, Linux box, a lot of virtual machines, probably doing a lot of crazy stuff in the background. That's like, okay, I'm gonna let this churn on this data set for a while. I'm gonna go play some games. NVMe, it works really well. So overall, uh, Adata has really, like, it's, it's shockingly impressive. This is an incredibly good value. I mean, I just pulled up the pricing on Amazon. And so, you know, the SX8200 Pro one terabyte is like 33% cheaper than the 970 Pro. The 970 Pro does win in a couple narrow scenarios, but it doesn't win by enough of a margin to justify being one third more expensive in terms of price. 
this is an incredible deal on an NVMe. Like, honestly, like, the flash prices can't come down fast enough. Here's your drive, one terabyte. It's around $200 at the time that I'm doing this video. Maybe, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, just owing to uh, market fluctuation by the time you're watching this video. But $200 for a one terabyte NVMe that's this fast is a steal. This should definitely be on your short list for consideration if you're thinking about buying a one terabyte NVMe and you want performance. This is a good drive. That's been a quick look at the uh, SX 8200 Pro. I need to go back to building my SR IOV monster machine. I found out that this motherboard doesn't actually have SR IOV, so I've been talking to MSI about getting that enabled and troubleshooting that. So I may not end up using this machine for SR IOV. I'm not sure yet. I mean, it's kind of a server thing. Might have to use this in an Epic, an Epic board or something like that. But if I am using it in an Epic and I am running a bunch of virtual machines, especially with like you know, some kind of virtualization software, then uh, the performance and high IOPS of this thing is really gonna come in handy. So good job, A-Data. I, um, I think we'll add some A-Data memory and maybe, maybe do an A-Data themed build in celebration of this. This is a little bit of an unexpected result because I mean, Samsung's kind of the incumbent and A-Data is just this scrappy little, I mean, they're not really, but you know, it's like the picture in my mind is like a scrappy little upstart. It's like dethroning, you know, the 800 pound gorilla. It's, that's actually a very impressive accomplishment. And I always love to see that in the industry. So good job, A-Data. All right, I'm gonna get back to building this before I continue rambling. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you in the level one forums.